So the first step is just basically painting in the background. And um, what I did was I got my yellow and just adding quite a lot of water into this, watering it down quite a lot. Actually, it's quite handy that there's a bit of blue left over on my brush because it's making it a little bit muddy and a bit greeny. And that's sort of what I was going for in this painting. I was wanting to create quite like a watercolory effect so that it wasn't all just one color, it was sort of, all quite um, mottled, yeah, it creates this kind of mottled effect, kind of cloudy almost, I feel. And that's just from like building up different layers of um, paint. And so I've kind of made this quite very watery down, like you'll see how much it's kind of slopping around the palette. Um, and if I just put that at the top of my painting, cause it's quite, it's actually quite greeny. So maybe this is more for the middle-y bit. Um, but I'm being quite, uh, not worrying too much about where it goes. It doesn't matter if some goes on the chimp, because actually you'll see that on my painting, like some of the background is shining through in the whole thing. It's kind of a unified space. And the way that you can unify a painting is by having little bits of the background reflecting through, because it just creates more of a dialogue between the chimp and the background. Like, you know, it's not just separate from it, it's part of it. I've got like a little very pale, very watered down bit of green. Now I'm gonna make a bit more, a bit more of a yellowy thing. And actually, I'm just gonna show you like, when I just go straight in with some yellow, it kind of creates quite a nice effect. Um, and you can also water it down by, um, adding white as well but actually I think that I'm just gonna just use water and water like it because it waters it down it means that the white of the page is um, coming through and you can kind of build up with some more color like for example you could add a little bit of green and yellow mix it together to create this darker shadow of the chimp down here so really I just added more blue to my green. So you can basically mix yellow with a bit of any of the blues that you like really to make that darker green. Um, I would probably recommend this dark indigo blue um, because it will mean that it relates more to the actual main body of the chimp. So the next step was painting in the kind of outlines, the, the really defining parts of the chimp are all done in dark blue. And the way I did this, it was really a matter of like building up layers of the same kind of colors. Just really thinking about where the light hits the face. And so even though it's all blue, like there's so many different varieties of blue in it. So I started off with the darkest blue and uh, when I drew in her face, I was like focusing on getting the eyes right, getting those, the nose, the mouth, you know, these sort of bits. When you're painting, it's less thinking about the line. This is more thinking about shape. For example, like above this eye, I kept quite like a big, dark shape of blue, just to suggest that shadow, because it actually like, when you look at an eye, like it is always really dark, like just under the eyebrow. I was also not only doing lines, if you see what I mean. So it's more sort of like shaping the chin. If you want, when you're doing the eyes, get a bit more delicate with the little brush. But I literally did it with um, one big brush and just using the tip. But actually, it might you might find it easier to go um, with a smaller brush for the for the. Um, well, with the, uh, with the eyes particularly, but then I think the rest of it, I would recommend going quite large because it just means that it frees you up a bit. Also with this painting, I really played around with like how wet the brush was. So I've just been applying paint directly from the pot. If you look here, it's, um, it has got this really quite dry effect. When you're doing things like the eyes, you probably don't want that. So add a little bit of water and it will glide a bit more, but 
I quite like enjoy that sort of effect that it does and the way it kind of builds up and leaves bits out because you'll find that the yellow underneath is um is starting to show through when when you have that little bit of dry um blue it just creates a really nice effect and actually on the cheeks you'll see like um just here on this bit um i kind of done some blue underneath and then i'd brought yellow up over the top again and because of the brush strokes and it was quite like thick paint it's almost created like a ridge that then the yellow kind of comes over and uh yeah i just really like the way that other colors beneath like start to shine through and kind of creates all this dialogue um so yeah the first blue step just putting in all the bits of shade that you see on the image and that's particularly as well around the face and be quite loose when you're doing it you know allow the brush to sort of almost follow the curves of the actual face of the chin whilst I've got these uh, darker areas um, which have a lot of just quite flat dark colour then you have these other areas where there's loads of little um little sort of thin sharp marks and as with any painting it's all just a matter of like creating variety creating interest by making lots of different types of shape of mark and you can use the shadow to sort of by building up bigger areas of flat like in the areas like this um, just so that it sets the rest of the chimp back or the, the face kind of comes forward sorry yeah and it sets that back because it almost creates this sort of empty shadow space so once you've sort of got your main features in and you can you know like even water it down a bit and get some of these areas in just play around with like which bits are more watered down, which bits aren't. Then you can start thinking about bringing in some other blues. You've got three blues in the pack. You've got cyan, which is the sort of lighter one, and uh, cobalt, and then the indigo. And the way that I sort of built this chimp up further was basically just creating like quite a few different blues some of them were mixed with indigo and you can kind of see that here like the ear is this really deep blue there's bits under the nose um there's some bits in this fur like i really like this kind of sheen that it's got and that's just by like making a really dark background and then building in with some lighter bits and then i'd say the the main bits of the more cyan -y ones were like on the nose like these highlights I've got a really like watery down bit there, just highlighting that um, bit of the eye. And you'll see like it's kind of an unlikely shape, it's just a little square shape. But um, I kind of play around with like what different shapes I can actually make in, in the painting throughout it. So I'm just going to mix together a couple of blues. I'll start off with the cobalt. Because I started dark, I added the layers sort of um, the colours as I went, like kind of going lighter. So I'm going to go directly on with some cobalt here. But I'd say that like the ear definitely is just sort of right there, right cobalt. And then just building up in bits where you think you can kind of see that there are more, it's a, it's a richer blue. And when I'm applying the paint for these bits, I was really thinking about like the curves of the face and how like my brush could reflect that curve. So when you look at obviously like the forehead of a chimp, it's kind of sticking out, isn't it? So I almost um, created like um, a curve in the, uh, in the painting mixed with a little bit of a cyan and indigo and uh, yeah I was painting it almost in a curve and 
the more you do it, it just sort of molds the, the face almost. Because I, I was trying to get a feeling of three my three dimensionality. I kind of went around the nose and then down here, I'd make it curved so that it was forming round the face, if you see what I mean. But then also there's the yellow shining through. So you've got like loads of colors kind of coming together. And uh, so the way that I did that was by like n m missing some bits out, but also having some of like quite watered down. And the way that I've got this translucent -y effect on the top is basically sometimes just by watering down some white or mixing some cyan with um, white. Like, and when you're mixing the paint, always just add like more white than you would the other color. I was just sort of creating almost like glazes, like in oil paint you have glazes, but this is just acrylic. And just by like watering it down, um, going over a layer, it sort of allows the colour that was beneath to shine through, but it still there's like little hints um, of it coming through. And yeah, basically, so this is just loads and loads of different layers on top of each other. And if you find that you do a colour and you think maybe if you go in with the cyan, which is like a really strong colour, and actually you'll see that it's not really that present in the painting, but I would do it sometimes and be like, oh, that's too, too bold. And in which case I would just get some white, water it down and paint over it. And then actually it makes a really nice sort of um, glowy effect. So I'm just going to show you here. Um, but even just when I'm painting on here, I've just added a bit of water to my brush and then got a tiny amount you'll see that it's kind of created quite a nice um, sort of water effect and it's sort of sheening over that little bit of blue that was quite dry when I put it on. So it just creates a really nice play of different textures. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white and I'm going to water that down so much like the yellow that I just made. Then I'm basically just painting over with this sort of slightly paler blue and you'll see it's created this sort of textury effect. I really like the effect of layering the watering down the, the white and just going over the top and just sort of playing around with like, you know, don't necessarily feel you have to follow my one completely, but I think what you should take from it is a uh, the emphasis of the paler parts like I've only used white really on the cheeks the nose and the forehead so basically the sort of finishing flourishes when you've sort of been building and building up your your blue it then comes to making this sort of little pink sheens um, and I've sort of added them just where I felt like I wanted to have a slightly different highlight to what was already there. Because I've already got this yellow and these blues coming through. So I thought I'll put like a warmer pink in just to kind of highlight bits where I wanted to have an extra little sort of layer of colour. Um, and what I did was I mixed some pink. Um, with indigo and again like I literally have the tiniest blob on my brush a little tiny bit of pink because you don't need a lot of paint and it kind of makes this really nice like lilac -y colour which just is a nice little addition to various parts of your picture You'll actually see in the ear here, I've got a less watered down version in it. I've got a couple of little spots of purple, just to kind of highlight little glimpses of the ear. It's just a sort of matter of like with the white, adding it where you want it. So I've put it on quite strongly there. <laughs> um, but 
just little flicks here and there. And it just kind of adds another dimension, I think. And it looks really nice as a complement to the yellow. The eyes are so crucial in every painting to just bring to life your subject. And I've just added like a really small bit of white just to, to the uh, pupils, just to give them that cheeky little glint. And I also do put a lot of attention onto the eyes. Like I outlined this in a, these eyes in a sort of pale blue, which is just made by like probably mixing cobalt and white, I would say. Um, but then there's even a little tiny bit of pink, I think, on this bottom eye. But I really just kind of do a lot of very small, with a, with a small brush, lots of little um, outliney sort of layers. But yeah, so that's kind of really all the steps. Thanks so much for coming. And yeah, good luck with the paintings. Can't wait to see how they turn out. <laughs>